For the fifth consecutive year, Italian racing behemoth Milestone gives us a new licensed Supercross game that allows players to get an Eli Tomax and rival's shoes as they hop around in dirty bumps on their powerful bikes. This year's big features seems to be a more accessible riding model and a rebuilt career mode. Let's see how all these worked out in the Xbox era review for Monster Energy Supercross 5. I'll be honest here, as much as I tend to have a good time with the series when it comes to Xbox every year, I also tend to play it around the review window and then rarely touch it again until the next installment. This means that while I do manage to build up some skills from time to time, the muscle memory fades away a bit every year, forcing me to relearn some of the basics. Monster Energy Supercross 5 immediately comes to my rescue, offering a convenient set of lessons in the brand new Futures Academy mode which features both low-resolution videos and playable tutorials that allow players to grasp the many facets of the title's approach to Supercross. Like in the previous games, the riding model has a lot of depth. On top of having to manage the usual accelerator, brake, and direction, as in any racing game, players can use the right stick to lean the bike left and right in turns and push the rider's body weight up or down to better balance landings and jumps. Crucially, the game's physics received several new assist modes, and ways to automatically manage the right stick maneuvers on top of easier AI settings. As I said, I haven't played this franchise in almost a year now, and whereas in the previous title it did take me a few races until I was able to compete on any setting, this time on the easiest option I was already lapping the competition with very little difficulty to stay in the bike. From there I slowly managed to crank the difficulty up to reach my optimal spot, although the AI did feel a little inconsistent, where some tracks I was almost lapping the riders on hard, and with others I barely kept up with the leading pack on normal. Clearly the best way to dive into the game's exciting races is to do the brand new career mode that ditches the progression model of the previous games to offer a much more classic experience. With multiple campaigns ranging from the feeder 250 series all the way to the highest class, players get to pick their teams and sponsors, customize their bikes and riders look, then advance through seasons to win championships. Results obtained allow the players to unlock points, which can then be spent on universal upgrades to impact handling, speed, and so on. With no team management to speak of, and only a handful of side activities such as sponsor events in between races, the window dressing for the career is rather limited, with the quality of the races doing all the heavy lifting. There are also injuries that can hamper a player's progress during the season, even going as far as making them lose skill points when they finally come back to racing. But ultimately, it's as straightforward as it gets, having none of the depth seen in other bike games like MotoGP or the Ride franchise. If you played last year's Monster Energy Supercross 4, chances are you know quite exactly what to find here in terms of content. You have just about every licensed track and driver from the Supercross Championship, quick races, custom tournaments, time trials, and an online mode, which, as is often the case with pre-launch reviews, we did not get a chance to test well enough. The track editor also makes a comeback, and there's even the usual brand new open world compound mode, taking us this time to a little town next to a lake in a forest, where players can find optional cosmetic changes that can be used in the library and helmet editors. In terms of assets like textures and 3D models, the game presents virtually the same look as last year, but I did notice a better usage of lights and particles, HDR for example feels better implemented, and so on. There's still a little bit of a choppy feel when making fast turns, despite the frame rate appearing to be a stable 60 on the Xbox Series X, but the general presentation is more consistent and pleasant than last year's game. Monster Energy Supercross 5 is certainly not a revolution, and if you're still knee deep into the high octane races of last year's installment, there's perhaps not many reasons to upgrade yet. However, a revised physics model and much improved riding assistances make the game a lot more accessible than before, which also makes it the best episode so far for newcomers. Veterans will only find iterative upgrades here, and even the new campaign mode offers very little novelty, but all in all it is a better game than their previous one, 